That's in the old money. That is the same height as the seniors. If anybody was watching the European Youth Championships last week, two foot nine for the youths, but when you move from under 18s to under 20s, those uh, barriers sneak up three inches. Danny Harris, the uh, world record holder as a junior, the man who made an Olympic final, won an Olympic silver medal as a junior in 1984. Great story, Danny Harris. He was the man who broke the sequence of victories of Edwin Moses. Moses beaten on his 109th attempt to win consecutive races. Harris beat him in Madrid in 1987. That came to an end, and uh, Danny Harris, one of the great sad stories as well. Actually, it's been a very interesting film has been put together about the Danny Harris story which I suspect we might well be seeing on our screen shortly. Danny Harris, who was banned for life after two positive tests for cocaine throughout his athletics career. He was fighting demons off the track. Didn't have too many on them, but he certainly did off them. So the first two, plus two fast losers in this, uh, or in these three semi-final heats. Here is uh, Watanabe, the Asian under-20 champion, expected to do well here. He's a 49-96 athlete. Mohamed Jalassi of Tunisia, set a lifetime best in winning his heat. Tamil Arasan of India is in lane seven. Montel Monte Falconi. Italy is in lane eight, and the Croatian Kukma in lane nine. The world number one, the outstanding favourite for this event, goes in the third heat. That's Jahil Hyde of Jamaica. And the champion as well, 49-29, his winning time two years ago. Side. Al Balawi, Wang, Azemia, Watanabe, Jalassi, Tamil Arasan, Monta Falconi, and Cookman. Eight athletes competing for a place in the final. Just the first two will be guaranteed a spot there, although there is room two further athletes, the fast losers over the three semi-final heats. So the world record, Danny Harris, the championship record set by the two-time world senior champion, Karen Clement. That was in Grosseto 12 years ago. And look at the way Watanabe there of Japan has gone off. Almost 100% he's giving it, having to chop there into that fourth hurdle. Jalassi just hit a little bit and also having a good run on the outside is Cookman, the Croatian, but it's Watanabe, not the tallest 400 meter hurdler, he's having to climb them just a little bit. Also coming through strongly there is Azemia of the Seychelles, but it is Watanabe of Japan who leads. Jalassi, the Tunisian, finishing very strongly after having hit a barrier down the back straight. And Watanabe now overstriding a bit, he may well be caught. Indeed he is. By Jalassi there of Tunisia. Jalassi who takes it, Watanabe is second. Those two will be the automatic qualifiers. The time, 50.83, so it's uh, rounded down indeed to 50.82. So it's another huge lifetime best for Jalassi. 51-49 he ran in the heat. He's not almost seven tenths off that here. So it does make you wonder, if you're making those sort of strides of improvement, he smiles as well he might, then it goes to show that he's likely to make an even bigger improvement in the final. But Watanabe, I think rather overcommitted himself down the back straight. And uh, he is certainly climbing those barriers. Landed a little awkwardly off the eighth, not too bad off the ninth, but Look here, Jalassi sees the stride perfectly, meets the barrier well, and as Watanabe is uh, overstriding and 
fighting to hold off the Tunisian. It is the North African who comes through to take it. So uh, good win there for Gillassi, big personal best. And the sort of run which, if he can continue this sort of improvement, may well deliver a medal when we get to the end. 51.54, the fastest loser's time, effectively. That was Alarasan. And that is a target that one or two may be aiming at from the second and third heats. First two going through automatically. And there's confirmation of the results from that first run. Jurassic 50.82.